and look at verse 1 of Revelation chapter 18. Ready, my friends? Verse 1 says, And after these things, I'll read, I'll read. Verse 1, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Verse 2 now together. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, What, my friends? Uh, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every what? Of every unclean and hateful bird. So here we find a repetition of the second angel's message in chapter 14, verse 8. And in chapter 14, verse 8, in the book of, of Revelation, that began in the year 1844, specifically the summer of 1844. But now watch. Just before the second coming of Christ, before when? The second coming of Christ, that second angel's message will be repeated. And what is the additional sins of Babylon that will be mentioned according to Revelation 18 verse 2. Let's go again. Maybe you have forgotten so quickly. Verse 2 again, what? And what, my friends? And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, what, my friends? Babylon the great is what? Fallen is fallen. And what now? And is become what? The habitation of what? Devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every what? Unclean and hateful bird. Now, what does Babylon mean? Okay, for those of you who are taking notes, I'm on line number two. So what does Babylon mean? Confusion. Confusion. It is derived from the word Babel, Genesis chapter 11, verse 9, and chapter 10, verse 10. Number three, throughout the scriptures, what does Babylon point to? Throughout the Bible, what does Babylon point to? Answer, Babylon points to false religions. False religions and false worship. And friends, according now to Revelation 17, what is Babylon represented as? Notice with me chapter 17, verse 5, a woman. A what, my friends? A woman. Notice here, Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And friends, when you have that, say amen. amen. The Bible says, and upon whose forehead? Come on. And upon her forehead was a name written, what, my friends? A mystery. Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and what? And abominations of the earth. So in chapter 17 in the book of Revelation, Babylon is likened unto a woman, her mother of harlots. And friends, what does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? A church. So Babylon is pointing to a Church, a confused church. Churches that are enveloped in false worship. Notice here, my friends, uh, 5B on the handout. 5B says, together, so whom? Babylon represents what? False religions uh, and churches that teach uh, heresies uh, and live in apostasy. When does the message of Revelation 18 concerning the fall of Babylon apply? Again, when does the message of Revelation 18 concerning the fall of Babylon apply? Go back to chapter 18. It applies, my friends, just before the seven last plagues are poured out. And friends, when those seven last plagues from God are poured out upon unrepentant sinners, is salvation still open? Salvation has been closed, my friends. So now watch. Revelation, what chapter? Chapter 18. Look, at, look again at verse 2. Bible says, my friends, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become what? Friends, I'm going to sing this verse. To, I'm going to sing this verse today. So let's catch the tune again. Babylon the great is what? Fallen is fallen, and what? And is become what? The habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and 
hateful bird. Verse 4 now says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, What, my friends? Come out of her, my people, that you be not what? Partakers of her sins, and that you receive what? Not of her plagues. So just before the seven last plagues fall upon unrepentant sinners, the message of Revelation 18, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils must be given. How many of us believe that we're living in the last days? How many? Raise your hand, oh friends, how many believe that? So when is this message uh, due to mankind? Now, my friends, notice here, line number seven. What has happened to the professed uh, Christian churches in Babylon since 1844? Uh, once she began to fall uh, spiritually and morally. Notice here, chapter 18, verse 2. The Bible says, my friend, okay, you tell me. What has happened, my friends, to the professed Christian churches that make up Babylon since 1844 once she began to fall spiritually and morally? Verse 2 again, Babylon is, is, and is become what? That's your answer. It's become what? So since 1844, the churches and the people that make up Babylon... And just before the second coming of Christ, the Bible says, my friends, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of what? Devils. The hold of every false spirit. So my friends, what has caused this terrible condition in the religious world? Notice with me 1 Timothy chapter 4. Where are we going to, my friends? 1 Timothy chapter 4. So what has caused this terrible, horrible condition among the people, among the churches that make up Babylon? Babylon is what? Fallen is what? Fallen and is become what? The habitation of devils. Friends, if we do not comprehend this message, it's a high possibility we will live and be classed in with Babylon and our lives and bodies, our homes, become dwelling places for Satan and demons. First Timothy chapter 4. So what has caused this terrible condition in the religious world? And so my friends, uh, they have departed from the faith and truth of God. Oh friends, that's why they have rejected, they have refused uh, the truth, uh, the faith, uh, true worship. As a result, my friends, Babylon is what? Fallen from what? From truth. And is become what? The habitation of devils. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Notice now as we compare scripture. Which scripture? Verse 1 says now the spirit, capital S. The Bible says now the spirit speaketh expressly. That in what times? In the last days, in the latter times. Some shall what my friends depart. From the faith, giving heed to what? Giving heed to seducing, don't forget that, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's how we connect them. So Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become what? The habitation of devils. What has caused this terrible condition among the people and churches that make up Babylon? They have departed from the faith. Whose faith? Christ's faith. The truth, my friends. Why? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? So Babylon, the word of God, they have departed from what? The words of God. Now, what has caused them to depart from the faith? First Timothy 4 verse 1 gives the answer. You tell me, what is it? <laughs> Giving heed to what? Giving heed to seducing spirits. And what doctrines of devils. So then comes the question, my friends. Uh, who are these seducing spirits? Who are these seducing spirits that have caused the people and the churches that make up Babylon to be in a fallen condition spiritually and morally? Who are these seducing spirits? Answer, these seducing spirits are false teachers. And false preachers. 
Notice with me 1 John chapter 4. Where are we going to, my friends? 1 John chapter 4. The Bible confirms, and when you hear the word spirit, it has two applications. One, it's talking about spirit as it relates to either the Holy Spirit, holy angels, or the devil and his demons. A secondary application of the word spirit point to people. Notice here, chapter 4, verse 1. 1 John, ready my friends? Bible says, beloved, believe not every what? And that word spirit, the S is lowercase. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many whom are false are prophets are, are gone out into the world. And verse 2 and verse 3 also confirm, my friends, these spirits are not, let's say, uh, uh, beings that we can see, beings that we can see, but it's people. Verse 2, hereby know we who now, not lowercase spirit, but uppercase spirit, Holy Spirit, hereby know we the Spirit of God, every what now, every whom, every person every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God but and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God and this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof we have heard that it should come and even now already is where is is it in the world, my friends? Uh, seducing what? Spirits. Many shall what? Depart from the? Faith. Giving heed to what? Seducing uh, spirits and what? Doctrines uh, of devils. These seducing spirits point to false teachers and false preachers. Now, what does seducing mean? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We have dealt with spirits, seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, seducing spirits, spirits, False prophets, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, seducing evil men, deceivers. Look at 2 Timothy with me, my friends. Where are we going to? Where are we going to? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. Do we have it, my friends? Bible says, but evil whom? Come on, friend, but whom? But evil men and whom? That's your word, seducers, uh, seducing spirits, seducers, shall wax how? Worse and what? Worse, deceiving uh, and being deceived. Uh, so what is the primary work of these evil men and seducers? Uh, deceiving the people. Some shall depart from the faith, uh, giving heed uh, to what, my friends? Uh, seducing uh, spirits. False teachers uh, and false preachers uh, deceiving the people and churches that make up Babylon. As a result, my friends, they are in a fallen condition, uh, morally and what? Spiritually. So now, my friends, uh, what are these doctrines of? Devils. Devils. Are we together? Babylon is what? Come on, we're going to sing the verse. Babylon, the great is, is and is become what? The habitation of what? Devils. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and uh, doctrines of what? So my friends, if we don't understand what these doctrines of devils are, it's a high possibility we might be listening uh, and taking heed uh, to those doctrines, my friends, and find ourselves deceived and lost. Are you with me now, friends? So what then are these uh, doctrines uh, of devils that have occupied the people and church of Babylon since 1844? To answer this question, we must first study the first place in the New Testament. Where? In the New Testament where we find uh, a doctrine of Satan or the doctrine of Satan, the teachings of Satan or the suggestions of Satan. We're in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, is the first place, is the first place that we find a doctrine from Satan, a teaching from Satan, a suggestion from the devil. We're my friends in the wilderness of temptation. Go to Matthew chapter 4 with me. Where are we going to? 
my friends, if God has called us as Seventh-day Adventists, to rescue people from Babylon who have become the habitation of devils. If we don't understand the nature of their disease, how can we help them? If we don't have a clue of the nature of their issue and problem, why they are deceived, how can we cure or help them spiritually? Matthew chapter 4. My friends, how many temptations were there? In that wilderness, three. Notice here, my friends, with me, 10B on the handout. Notice here, 10B. Together, let us summarize the three great temptations that Satan brought to Jesus in the wilderness. Together now, quotation, come on. The first what? The first great temptation was on the point of what? Appetite. And what now was the second great temptation? On which point? On the point of presumption, the third temptation. Love of the world, the first one, appetite. Second one, what my friends? I wonder, what is presumption? Knowingly sinning and still expecting a blessing from God, salvation from God while you knowingly sin. Doctrines of what? The devil. Love of the world is a doctrine of whom? The devil. Notice here, my friends. Notice Matthew chapter 4. Look at verse 2 with me. Let's focus on the first doctrine of the devil. Let's focus here on the first teaching of the devil. Let's focus here on the first suggestion of the devil. Because Babylon the great is what? And is become what? Oh, friends, some shall depart from the Come on, talk to me. Giving heed to what two things? Uh, seducing and what? Doctrines of what? So my friends, should we just guess at what they are? Go back to your Bibles and see the first place in the New Testament where you find a suggestion, a doctrine, a teaching from the devil. Matthew chapter 4 verse 2. Ready my friends? And when he had fasted for today's and for tonight, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter, the devil, came to him and said, What, my friends, if thou be what? If thou be what? Follow me. If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made what? Bread. Friends, pause there. Notice here, let me give it to you. 10C says, my friends, 10C, according, follow me. To Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 4, what was one of the doctrines and suggestions of Satan? The first suggestion of Satan to Christ in the wilderness was simply this. If thou be the son of God, follow me, you do not have to deny your appetite. You're fasting. If thou be the son of God, command that these uh, stones be made bread. Feed yourself. If thou be the son of God, you don't have to deny yourself. You don't have to deny your appetite. What's the application? Satan says to many of us, if you are a Christian, you don't have to deny your, your appetite. If you are a Christian, you don't have to deny your appetite. And friends, appetite does not only deal with food, it deals with passions and desires. If you are a Christian, you don't have to deny your appetite. That's a doctrine from the devil, my friends. Tendi. The desire of Ages page 117 says, With Christ as with the Holy Peer in Eden, appetite was the ground of the first great temptation. Just where the Roman began, the work of our redemption must begin as by the indulgence of appetite Adam fell. So by the denial, the what my friends? The denial of appetite, Christ must overcome. If thou be the Son of God, you don't have to deny your appetite. And friends, it's nothing new. 
is the same principle that Satan brought to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Has God said, thou should not eat? I'm telling you, as a daughter of God, you don't have to deny your appetite. Do you see it, my friends? You can partake of what God has restricted, what God has forbidden, and still be saved. That's a doctrine from whom? And what's wrong with Babylon? Notice here, Tenny. Oh, friends, testimonies for the church, volume three. I'm happy that you're with me. Amen, my friends. Amen. The Spirit of God is with us. Notice here, Tenny. As your first parents lost Eden through what? My friends, understand that. So what was one of the chief sins that caused Adam and Eve to be removed from the Garden of Eden? Huh? The indulgence of what? Appetite. Having no restraint placed upon appetite, upon desires, upon passions. May I be clear? Whether it is things the Bible commends or things the Bible condemns. Notice now, my friends, I want to ask you a question. So how could we believe then that we can be restored into the new Eden if we keep on indulging our appetite? Notice, my friends, as our first pyramids lost Eden, let me hasten on through the indulgence of appetite. Our only hope of regaining Eden is through what, my friends? Uh, come on, through what? The firm uh, denial of appetite and passion. Let me read on. Abstemiousness. Oh, friends, in diet and control of all the passions. Will what? Preserve uh, the intellect uh, and give what? Mental uh, and moral vigor. So my friends, uh, will perverted appetite destroy the intellect? Destroy the mind? Does appetite, perverted appetite, does that have a direct link to suicidal thoughts? To depression? Notice, to stress. Oh, first listen, it says, so Christ wants to help us, reading on, uh, give mental and moral vigor, enabling men to bring all their propensities uh, under the control of the higher powers and to discern between what? Right and wrong, the sacred and the... Come on! Oh, my friends, that's what Satan did to Eve and Adam. He got, he, he, he got them, my friends, uh, to indulge in appetite. As a result, uh, the line of distinction between right and wrong, the sacred and the common, that line became blurred. That's what he tried with Christ. Did Christ overcome? Can we overcome? Listen, my friends, all who have... Uh, a true sense of the sacrifice made by Christ in leaving his home in heaven to come to this world that he might be his, he might by his own life show men how to resist temptation. Will do what? Will cheerfully do what? Deny self and choose to be partakers with Christ of his sufferings. Some shall depart from what? The faith, uh, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and what? Doctrines of what? Devils. And what was one of those doctrines from Satan? If thou be the son of God, you don't have to deny your appetite. If you are Christians, you don't have to listen to a message that puts a check on your diet. A check on your appetite. A check, a restriction upon your passions. But what says Luke chapter 9, verse 23, and Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, as it relates, my friends, to diet and appetite and salvation, even passions? Look at Luke chapter 9 with me. Where are we going to, my friends? Luke chapter 9. The Bible says, my friends, in Luke chapter 9, beginning now with verse 23, we notice, my friends, if any man will what? 
Come on, if any man uh, will come after me, what says Jesus? Oh, friends, if any man uh, will come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Uh, take up his cross. How often? Uh, how often? Uh, daily and do what? Follow me. Did Christ deny his appetite in the wilderness, my friends? And guess what? What Satan was, uh, let's say, literally tempting Christ with, it wasn't pork. It wasn't shrimp. It's bread. Now you can say, well, maybe it was bread with some unhealthy ingredients. That's not the point. It was something good on the surface. So my friends, it's not just restriction of things which are bad, but guess what? Being moderate. Oh, beloved. Being moderate with even the things that are uh, good, my friends. So when a preacher or a teacher tells you, don't listen to health reform or dress reform. Any message that puts a check, a restriction upon your diet, desires, and passions, that minister, teacher, is a seducing spirit. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. So if I go to the ABC, the bookstore, or this bookstore, that bookstore, and get that teacher's book and begin to read that book, well, the same seducing spirit that occupied that man's mind, that woman's mind has now occupied whom? Why, my friends? For by beholding, you become changed after the same image. Notice here, my friends, number 12, what are some of the scriptures that the seducing spirits, the false preachers in the churches of Babylon use and misinterpret in order to deceive the people regarding appetite? Colossians chapter 2. Where are we going to, my friends? That's why it's dangerous, young people, to buy music CDs or, well, we don't buy CDs anymore. Pardon me. Exactly, you know what I'm talking about. To download music, uh, oh friends, uh, from singers. I want to ask you a question. Who were the singers in the Bible? Who were the singers in the camp of uh, Israel? What were their title? They were priests. They were Levites. Levites. They understood, my friends, the sanctuary and experience. Listen, friends, that's why it's dangerous when our churches began to invite uh, Balaam's prophet to come into the Seventh-day Adventist church. When the Bible says, my friends, Babylon is, fallen is, and is become the habitation of devils, if you bring their preachers, uh, their music, their books, their education, oh, friends, their reading materials, they address the same spirit, evil spirit, from Babylon will occupy your life, your home, and your churches, not to mention your schools. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Ready, my friends? Bible says, let no man therefore judge you in what? In meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. This is one scripture. Many seducing spirits, false preachers say, look, the Bible says, let no man judge you in what you eat, your meat, in what you drink. Oh, friends, that's a deception. Because Colossians 2.16, the meat and drink were shadows, verse 17, which are a shadow of what? Things to come, but the body is of Christ. The meat and drink offerings were pointing to Christ. The meat and drink were the ceremonial, sacrificial system. Meat, they bring flesh, lamb's flesh. Meat, they would bring grains. Uh, that's food, amen. Amen, friends, olives. The drink would be the blood of the lamb. Offerings. The, the, the drink would also be grape juice. Huh? The drink would be oil. Meat and drink offering. Notice here, my friends, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Where are we going to, my friends? 1 Timothy chapter 4. Doctrines of what? Yeah. 
devils, my friends. So when preachers to the Bible says in Colossians 2, let no man judge you if you want to drink a little liquor, that's okay. That's a doctrine from whom, my friends, the devil. Notice here, my friends, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Notice here verse 4. Ready, my friends? The Bible says, for every creature of God is what? Good uh, and nothing to be uh, refused uh, if it be received uh, with thanksgiving. They say, here it is. The Bible says everything is good. Just partake of it. My friend, I want to ask you a question. What is a swine good for? Huh? What is a shrimp good for? What is a lobster and a crab good for? Huh? The oyster, the clam good for? <laughs> to, to clean the earth. So when they clean the filth of the bottom of the ocean and uh, the ground, what you eat, you become whatever you eat, you partake of what that thing consists of. Do you see, my friends? And verse 5 says, my friends, for it is what? Sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What does sanctified mean? Cleansed and what? Set aside. Does the Bible say the shrimp, the, the lobster, the swine's flesh? May I add that the liquor drinking is all unclean, unfit for human consumption. Yes. It's there, my friends, but they say, never mind, just pray over it. So I can pray over some liquor, and that's all right, right? Have mercy. Doctrines of what, my friends? Notice here in your Bibles, Acts chapter 10. Where are we going to, my friends? Acts chapter 10, and that's why Babylon, the Bible says, it has become the habitation of what? Devils. Hold of every foul spirit, cage of every unclean bird. Many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and what, my friends? Doctrines of devils. Acts chapter 10. Peter is on the roof of the house. He's hungry. Went into a dream. God gave him a vision. And now the Bible says in verse 11, and saw heaven open. Verse 11, and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet net at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of what four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him saying rise peter kill and eat but peter said not so not so lord for I have never eaten anything that is what? Don't forget that. That is what? Come on or what? Unclean. Come on or what? Don't forget that phrase. Verse, verse 16 now says, This was done three times, thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And while Peter doubted in himself, what this what? Vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the, look at verse 25, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius what? Met him, notice, and fell down at his feet and worshiped him, but Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God had showed me that I should uh, not. Call what, my friends, uh, any man uh, common or unclean. Do you see, my friends? That vision was not talking about food. So when preachers say no restriction on your diet, that's a doctrine from whom? The devil, my friends. Notice, notice uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Where are we going to, my friends? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So now what say us the scriptures? 
regarding the importance of appetite and temperance and their impact upon our lives. Paul says, my friends, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, are we there, my friends? Now, we know this. Verse 25. Ready, my friends, together. Come on. And, uh, and every man is what? Again. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Uh, now, they do it to obtain a what? A corruptible crown, but we are temperate in order to receive what? An incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. Verse 27, but I keep under my what? My friends, is there a restriction there? I keep under, subject my body. And bring it into subjection to my mind, uh, lest that by any means, uh, when I have uh, preached unto others, I myself become a what? Oh, my friends, uh, a castaway. Second Peter chapter one. Where are we going to, my friends? Second Peter chapter one. What says the scriptures regarding the importance uh, of appetite and temperance? And their impact upon our lives. Second Peter 1 verse 5. Ready my friends? Are we together? Verse 5 together. Come on. It says what? And beside this. Giving all diligence. Add to your faith what? Virtue. And to virtue what? Knowledge. And to knowledge what? Temperance. Watch this now. And to temperance what? Patience. And to patience what? Godliness. Stop right there, my friends. Can a man or a woman be godly without being patient? Huh? No. And can one be patient without being temperate? No, my friends. And question, is patience, temperance a part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Huh? So when a preacher or a teacher teaches that there should be no restriction on your diet, your appetite, your passions, that preacher's telling you, you can be saved without having the fruit of the Spirit of God. Go to John 15 with me. John, what chapter, my friends? But my friends, these things are happening in our churches. Notice here in John 15, John, what chapter, my friends? Verse 5, I am the vine, Jesus says. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. Verse 8 says, together, come on, verse 8. Oh, friends, what makes Christ happy? Herein is my Father glorified that you what? Be a much what? Fruit. And Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says, my friends, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is uh, love, uh, joy, peace, uh, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, and what? Temperance. Daniel chapter 1. Where are we going to, my friends? Daniel chapter 1, it's a doctrine from the devil. Oh, beloved, verse 8, we know this. Where are we going to, my friends? Hmm. Where are we going to, my friends? Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would what, not uh, defile himself with uh, the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, my friends, uh, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Uh, where am I now? Verse uh, Verse 12 now says, my friends, Daniel says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, how long? Uh, ten days. And let them give us what? Vegetables, uh, fruits uh, to eat, uh, and water to what? Not liquor. Oh, friends, uh, not Pepsi. Not Coca-Cola. Well, that's old stuff, right? Yeah. 
not Red Bull. Okay, we get the point now, right, my friends? Skip on down to verse 14. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them how long? Ten days. And now, at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared. Fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat what? Oh, friends, is health reform a blessing? Is Bible temperance a blessing? Verse 16, thus Melzar took away now, praise God, the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them what? Fruits, nuts, grains, and veggies. Verse 17, the impact now, verse 17, together. As for these four children, God gave them what? Knowledge and skill in all. How much learning? All learning, how much wisdom, all wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in what, my friends, all vision and dreams. Notice 13 be together while the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Are we together, my friends? 13 B. Together. Now, let me just give you this one. Let's follow here. While the Seventh Day Adventist Church is not presently Babylon. It is a fact that her members are drinking the wine from the cup of Babylon as it relates to perverted appetite. Most of the Seventh-day Adventists, administrators, pastors, leaders, and members see nothing wrong with intemperance. They frequently say that what a person eats and drinks will not save them. While that statement is correct, no person will be saved while knowingly eating and drinking things that God's words forbid for these last days and things that do what? Destroy the body. Did I say every Seventh-day Adventist? It says most of them, right? Because friends, how many are called? How many are called? Many are called what? Few. Notice here, my friends, in your Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Where are we going to, my friends? Come on, let's sing our scripture song. Oh, friends, chapter 18, verse 2. Babylon, come on. Babylon the great is, fallen is, fallen and is become what? The habitation of what? Devils. Pause there, my friends. So who is occupying? Who is possessing? Who has, has control of the people and churches that make up Babylon? The devil, my friends. But hold on, hold on. Who should occupy our bodies? The Holy Spirit of God. What a contrast. Verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Ready, my friends? Together know you. Come on, no you're not. That you are, you are what? The temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man does what? Defile the temple of God. Him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Will God destroy any man, any woman without first giving multiple warnings? Oh, friends, will the warnings come? Hosea chapter 4. Where are we going to, my friends? I'm skipping 1 Corinthians 6, 19, verse 20. I'm skipping that. Go to Hosea 4. I'm skipping Revelation 21, 27. Hosea, what chapter, my friends? Hosea chapter 4. Again, my friend, the question is, uh, oh, beloved, uh, things can destroy our bodies and we might not eat pork. We might not be eating crabs and lobster and shrimps and drinking Red Bull and liquor, my friends. But guess what? We're living in a time when God says, uh, when we begin to see disease in animals, disease in the birds, uh, chicken and turkey, disease in the seas, the fishes, it's time to leave uh, animal products, which include dairy products alone, my friends. Do you believe the Bible? But now watch. You see, friends, we profess to be Christians, 
but many of us are listening to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We do not want a restriction. We want to come this far in reformation, but no farther. But the Bible says, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, oh friends, the path of the just is as a shining light. It shines more and more unto the perfect day, but the ways of the wicked are what? Darkness, my friends, and they know not what at what they stumble. Hosea chapter 4. Ready, my friends? And friends, healthy form is not just eating granola every day. Amen. Amen. That's not healthy form, my friends. There's a wide array of foods that we can eat. Well put together, colorful, attractive, smelling good, tasting good, and healthy. If not, my friends, Jesus made a mistake. Can you imagine you go down and buy a, a used Toyota minivan and you begin to put water in the gasoline tank? What would happen, my friends? Huh? Who made us? And what diet did God give to man? And my friends, did he put a restriction on it? Oh, friends, Hosea chapter 4. Well, back it up to Hosea chapter 3. Hosea chapter 3 says, my friends, do we have it, saints? Yes. Oh, Father, please give us more of your spirit. Verse 5, afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in when... What time in the latter days, verse 1, now hear the word of the Lord, your children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. There's going to be an outbreak. Oh, my friends, how many times does the media tell us there's an outbreak? Uh, which times are we living in? The beginning of time or the ending? Listen, there, there shall be an outbreak and blood will touch blood. Death, verse 3, therefore shall the what, my friends? Shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall what languish, which means become disease, with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be what, my friends? Are people telling less lies today or more lies? Are they committing, oh friends, are they being chased? And virtuous now, are they committing or are they committing more adultery and fornication? So as these things increase, disease in what? The animal kingdom. Verse 6 says, my friends, my people are destroyed. They get sick, cancers, tumors. Oh, beloved, my people are destroyed for what? A lack of what? Knowledge, my friends. Go to Psalm 101. Where are we going to, my friends? Oh, friends, is the body only defiled by what we eat and what we drink? It's a question. Is our bodies only defiled by what we eat and what we drink? Notice here, my friends, Psalm 101. Friends, what are we setting before our eyes? Hmm. What are we watching on the internet? Hmm. What are we watching on the television? Notice here, my friend, Psalm 101. Look at verse 3. Ready, my friends? Verse 3 says, Psalm 101, together. Come on, together. David says, I will set no. My friends, this is David's prayer to God. And whenever we read a prayer in the Bible, what must we do with it? Make that prayer our prayer. David says, I will what? I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall what, my friends, not cleave unto me. Some of us are saying, Pastor, I know it's wrong for watching these things, looking at these things, reading these things. Oh, Pastor, I know, but I can't help myself. Yes, you can. 
My friends, don't get me wrong. There's no help in you. No savior in you. There's no hero in you. No God in you. But there's one thing you can do is like David, I will. That's it. It's a choice, my friends. I will. And once you choose, my friends, to take that filth out of your room, out of your house, guess what? Christ will empower your choice. Amen. Proverbs 27. Where are we going to, my friends? My fr Proverbs 21, pardon me. Proverbs 21. It's time for us, my friends, to stop saying, oh, I'm so weak. I can't control myself. A big, oh friends, a plate of food is before you. You feel stuffed, you're satisfied, but you keep eating. Oh, I can't help myself. I will put the plate down. I will put the knife and fork down. Christ, I will do what's right. He has promised to empower your choice. Proverbs 21. Ready, my friends? Look what else destroys your body. Verse 17. Ready, my friends? Together. Come on. Come on, friends. Again. He that loves pleasure shall be a what? Poor man. He that loves what? Wine and oil shall not be rich. Again. Verse 17. Again. He that loves what? Pleasure shall be a what? A poor man. What's wrong with the Laodiceans? Lukewarm. They are what? They think that they are rich and increase with goods. But have, come on, but no, it's not that they are wretched, uh, miserable, and what? Poor, blind, and naked. And what does the Bible say will make us a poor man? A poor woman. He that loves what? Pleasure. How many of us have a marginal reference? What's that word for pleasure? What's that word for pleasure? Sports. Sports, my friends. These aren't my words. If you love the competition, the Bible says you'll be a poor man. Not just poor financially, but poor spiritually. Notice your hand out here, my friends. Sports. That's why we are told that Satan invented sports. To take our minds off God's words. 14b. Ready my friends? Together. And friends when I say sports. I'm dealing with competition. Not true recreation. Notice here. Yet we have a work to do. To resist temptation. Those who would not fall. Are prey to Satan's devices. Must do what my friends? Must do what my friends? Must do what, my friends? Must guard well the avenues of the soul. What's wrong with Babylon? Are they a prey to Satan? They are the habitation of devils. I wonder why. They, they aren't being taught to guard well the avenues of their soul. As a result, Satan comes in and finds habitation there. There's no guard up. If we are going to help those in Babylon, how can we also be possessed? Demon possessed. We can't help them. Notice, those who would not fall a prey to Satan's devices must do what again? Are we tired? Are we tired? Must do what, my friends? Must guard well the avenues of of the soul. What are those avenues? Your five senses. Listen now friends. They must avoid reading, seeing, or hearing that which will suggest impure thoughts. Sometimes my friends, the postman brings some little thing in my box. I don't bring them home. Those magazines, I do not bring them home. I take the magazine and I tear the back piece off where my name or Hillary's name is and tear that piece up and dump, put the whole magazine in the trash can. I'm not bringing that thing on. You don't believe me? Sunday, Monday, just look in your, your, your mailboxes. Look at those magazines. They are filled with filth. And they suggest impure thoughts. 
we must guard well the avenues to our souls. Well, just, just a little magazine, Pastor. It won't hurt anybody. Naked woman, naked men. Huh? Listen, friends. Listen. The mind should not be left to want wonder at random upon every subject that the adversary of souls may suggest. Girding up the what, my friends? The. Okay, friends, come on. Come on, together, come on. Girding up the what? The loins of your mind, says the Apostle Peter. Be sober, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts in your ignorance, but like as he which called you is what? Holy. Be you yourselves also what? Holy in all manner of living. Together now, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what? Think on these things. Again, those magazines that we find in our mailboxes belong back in the trash can. You see, some of us do not want a message that puts a restriction. And that's the doctrine of the devil. Notice here, my friends, reading on together, this will what? Come on. This will require earnest prayer and unceasing watchfulness. We must be aided by the abiding influence of the Holy Spirit, which will attract the mind where upward and habituate it to dwell on pure and holy things. And we must give diligent study to God's word together now wherewithal. Shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word, says the psalmist, have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The songwriter says, my friends, earthly pleasures vainly call me. I would be like Jesus. Nothing worldly shall enthrall me. I today would be like Jesus. Be like Jesus is my song. In the home, on the job, at church, in the community, and in the throng. Be like Jesus. How often? All day long. I would be like Jesus. Friends, is that a choice? Is that a decision we must make every day? Yes. My friends, do you know how many times in my personal Bible study, my devotion, I turn to my hymnal, my friends, and that's the song I'm singing. Lord, today, earthly pleasures are calling me, but the songwriter says they are calling me in vain. Why? I would be like Jesus. Notice here, my friend, Psalm 16. Where are we going to, my friends? If young people and adults want to be helped today, they can be helped. Earth of pleasures, vain to call me, but I would be like home, like Jesus. Nothing worldly shall enthrall me. I would be like Jesus. Today, I choose to be like Jesus. What about you? Amen. What about you? Psalm 16, verse 11, what it says, my friends. Okay, so I guess we're tired, right? Come on, what it says. In thy what? In thy presence is what? Fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there what? Pleasures for how long? 15b, listen, 
many of the amusements popular in the world today, even with those who claim to be Christians, tend to the same end as did those of the heathen. There are indeed few among them that Satan does not turn to account in destroying souls through the what, my friends? Through, through the drama, Satan has worked for ages to excite passion and to glorify sin. But pastor, it's just a, a simple movie. Through the drama, he has worked for ages. Pastor, it's just a sitcom, a reality TV show. Through the movies, he has worked for ages to excite passion in whom? in us and to glorify sin. Listen now, my friends, it says uh, the opera with its fascinating display and bewildering music, the masquerade, the dance, the what, my friends, uh, I won't go over there. The car table Satan employs to break down the what, my friends, the barriers of what? of reason and open the door to what my friends to sensual indulgence then it says in every what gathering for pleasure we're what my friends pride is fostered and appetite is indulged where one is led to forget God and to lose sight of eternal interest there is whom what is he doing? He's binding. Oh, friends, uh, his chains about uh, the soul. And what is wrong with those in Babylon? Babylon the great is. And is become the habitation of devils and the what? Come on. Is become the habitation of devils. The hold. Can a chain hold somebody and bind somebody? Ah, oh, my friends, I want to ask you a question. When you're playing dominoes, can pride elevate in your life? I'm going to make sure I give you six tonight and send it to your bed. When you're playing cards, is pride fostered? Huh? I want to ask you a question. When you're playing Monopoly, is the love for greed and gain fostered, my friends? Huh? Who, is playing, who plays Monopoly and think about Jesus? Huh? Who plays dominoes and say, I'm thinking about marching to Zion? Oh, friends, it says, there is whom the devil doing what? Binding his chains about the soul. Wake up, my friends. No, let me go here. Friends, watch this. Oh, friends, you know I don't major in just showing what's happening in our seven-day Adventist churches. Don't give me the name of the church. What's here? Seven-day Adventist church. Watch this. Quickly, watch this. It says, Metro Pace presents what? The arcade. A night of food, fun, and frolic. What? A night of food, fun, and frolic. A night, friends, what happened to Belshazzar that night? When King Belshazzar of, which kingdom? Babylon. King Belshazzar of Babylon. Did he have some food there? Yes. Some fun? Yes. Frolic? Yes. That very night, a handwriting was on the wall saying, Mine, mine, tikel. You for sin, thou hast been weighed in the balances and art found wanting. How many parents would have loved to have their children in Belshazzar's kingdom have eating food, having fun, and frolic? I told you, while the Seventh-day Adventist church is not Babylon, we are drinking that same wine. But notice here, my friends, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Where are we going to, my friends? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And this is why it's so easy for our churches to be reading their books, singing the songs of Babylon. 
The choirs from Babylon, preachers from Babylon, because we're drinking their wine. But my friends, is it possible for us to overcome sin? Amen. Pride, selfishness, the perverted appetite. Is it possible, my friends? Notice here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Ready, my friends? Verse 5. What it says here, my friends? Come on. Oh, my time. It says what, my friends? Casting down what? Imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the what? The knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every what? Every what? Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ can we overcome sin in the mind yes. that's what it says second Corinthians 12 my friends is there power for us to overcome sin Amen. oh friends notice second Corinthians 12 as I'm wrapping this thing up my friends second Corinthians 12 verse 10 just give me the last part of verse 10 what it says my friends for when I'm what for when I am uh, weak, oh, my friends, uh, can Jesus give us strength? My friends, let's quote Philippians 4.13. What it says. How many things? So, my friends, can we overcome perverted appetite? Can we overcome sin? And Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said, I will give you power to tread upon serpents. And who is also called a serpent? It's your power to overcome the devil, my friends. Amen. So let's recap. Follow me. What says chapter 18, verse 2, Revelation? Babylon the great is, is, and is become what? The habitation of devils. What has brought that condition among the people and the churches in Babylon? Some shall do what? Depart from the... Come on, sh come on, some shall what? Depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and uh, doctrines of devils. And one of those doctrines is? If thou be the, come on friends, come on. If thou be the son of God, you don't have to deny your appetite. If you are a Christian, you don't have to what? Deny your appetite. Luke chapter 4. Where are we going to, my friends? Luke chapter 4. We close right here. Line 18. What is the connection between refusing to deny yourself of the perverted appetite, sinful desires, and being demon-possessed, being a habitation for devils? Luke chapter 4, my friends. Notice here in verse 32. Ready, my friends? Verse, to, verse 31, the Bible says, Christ came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on which days? Which days, my friends? And what's today? Oh, friends, Sabbath. Verse 33 says, and in the synagogue, in where? Friends, talk to me. In where? What's a, a church? On which day? Sabbath. Verse 33, and in the church there was a man which had a spirit of what, my friends? The spirit of an unclean. And what's wrong with Babylon? The habitation of devils. Notice, so now, was this church the Samaritan's church? So here, among God's professed people, is a person who the devil is inhabiting. Yes. Pause right there. Because maybe you thought I was just talking about a Baptist church, Catholic church, etc. Here is a man on the Sabbath, which would represent the Seventh-day Adventist church, possessed with a demon, a devil, my friends. 
And one of the signs to know if you are possessed with a devil, a demon, is that you say to Jesus, leave me alone. That's it. I don't want to hear a message that puts a restriction on my appetite, my diet, my way of life. Leave me alone. You are demon possessed. One who rejects Jesus, rejects his messengers, rejects his truth is demon possessed. Notice here in 18b, we close. My time is up. We close. 18b. Ready, my friends? Ministry of Healing, page 91 says, In the synagogue at Capernaum, Christ was speaking of his mission to set free whom? To set free the slaves of sin. Today can Christ set us free. Amen. How many of us have sinned? All. Oh, my friends, all have sinned. So how many of us have been possessed with devils? All, all of us. Notice here, skip on down to my second paragraph. The cause of this man's affliction also was in his own what? So he was possessed and who was to be blamed? And who was he? Which day did he worship on? The Sabbath. Listen, friends. Let's look at ourselves. Listen. It says, he had been fascinated with the what? The pleasures of sin and had thought to make life a grand carnival in temperance and frivolity. What two things there? And what? Frivolity. And on the church's website it says, come for a night of food, games, fun, and frolic. Frolic means you're frivolous. So in that Seventh-day Adventist church, they have become the habitation of Amen. devils. And we say, why does safe to serve not pattern the, church, the other churches in Seventh-day Adventism? Because we want our bodies, young people, adults, to be the temples of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And not temples for Satan and his demons. Amen. That's why. We love Christ too much. Amen. I love you all too much to lead you astray. Amen. Follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Says here, my friends, watch. Intemperance and frivolity perverted the noble attributes of his nature. And Satan did what, my friends? Took entire control of him. Remorse came too late. When he would have sacrificed wealth and pleasure to regain his lost manhood, he had become helpless in the grasp of the evil one. A time is going to come, going to a secular doctor or a medical missionary won't help you. Listen, friends, in the Savior's presence, and friends, see yourself there. When I read this, I said, Lord, here am I. This is Andrew Enriquez. We must see ourselves. Why, why must I do that, Pastor? Well, let me ask you. Your only option then is to see somebody else here. And that's us. We do not want to examine ourselves. We want to read something and say, this is for him. This is for her. But never, this is for me. It says... Well, skip on down. In the Savior's presence, he was, uh, he was roused uh, to long for what? Freedom. But the demon resisted the power of Christ. When the man tried to appeal to Christ for help, the evil spirit did what? Put words into his mouth. Uh, and he cried out in an agony of fear. The demoniac partially comprehended that he was in the presence of one who could set him free. But when he tried to come within reach of that mighty hand, another's what? Another's will held him. Another's words found utterance through him. Yet his condition is not 
hopeless. God does not control our minds without our consent. But every man is what? Here is the secret, my friends. But every man is what? Is free to choose. Free to choose what power he will have to what? Rule over him. Today will you choose Christ to inhabit you. Christ to rule over you. None, oh my friends, is Babylon for it? Huh? Are some Seventh-day Adventists in a spiritual fallen condition? Listen now, friends. Maybe this line is just for someone, someone this afternoon. It says together, none, come on. None have fallen so low. None are so vile, but that they may find. We could pause there and go home, my friends. None has fallen so low. None have been so sinful. There is still hope, my friends. But hope when? Today. It says the demoniac in the place of prayer could utter only the words of Satan. I said, Lord, what could that mean? The man who was possessed, pardon me, the Sabbath keeper who was possessed with the devil in the place of prayer only uttered the words of Satan. Friends, I said, Lord, what could this mean? Because I want to know if I'm possessed with demons. And the Holy Spirit says, if you come to the point in which you do not relish prayer any longer, you're demon possessed. If you come to the point in which evening, morning, and noontime, you don't have a desire, a relish, my friends, a longing, uh, an appetite uh, for communion with Jesus, you are demon possessed. Why? Because something else is keeping you busy. Somebody else is keeping you away. You are what? Demon possessed, my friends. Friends, I'm going to close. Skip on down to Isaiah 49. Next paragraph together. Come on, shout the what? Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Who is the prey? Who is the prey? That's us. Who is the mighty? That's, oh, friends, that's the devil. It says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Thus said the Lord, come on together, even whom? Even the captives of the mighty shall be what taken away and the prey of the devil shall be delivered then Jesus says together I will what contend with Satan and I will save thy children my friends why because your children are also captives of Satan that's the context Parents, your children need to be delivered. I surrender all. Your children need to be delivered. Husband, your wife needs deliverance. Come on, song leaders. I surrender all. Wives, your husband need deliverance. People in Babylon need deliverance. Those in the Seventh-day Adventist church need what? Deliverance. Has Christ given to us a promise? Friends, I know it was a long sermon. I know. Long sermon. But a day is going to come. You are going to wish you could hear one word from God. Has God given to us a promise? Isaiah 49, 24 and 25. I will set the captives free. I will set you free. But can God set a man free who chooses not to be free? Can God deliver a woman who chooses not to be delivered? So my friends, if we are lost, who's to be blamed? So now, today, must we choose? 
Must we choose? Let's sing this song, I Surrender All. Let's all stand.